Welcome back to the Old History Project YouTube channel. Please remember to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Please see the description below for links to my Facebook page and podcast. In today's video, we are going to cover what's under Cherokee Lake here in Hamblin, Hawkins, Granger, and Jefferson counties. This is a deep subject, so let's dive in. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. And if you want to help support your favorite internet historian, you can go to anchor.fm where I host my podcast and you can subscribe to it. Thanks for watching. Before we get into what's under the lake, you got to know that Cherokee Lake was created after the construction of Cherokee Dam, which was built between 1940 and 1942, which in turn was built out of the greater context of the U.S. government's wartime efforts to increase military strength and defense infrastructure. As mass quantities of aluminum and other high value wartime materials were needed, a massive overhaul to the necessary manufacturing facilities occupying the Tennessee Valley was needed, like the Alcoa aluminum plant, which was the largest in the world at that time, had up until this point in history supplied its own power. This overhaul would require more power than what was currently being put out. In short, TVA was the United States secret weapon against the Axis powers during World War II. The crash construction of Fontana, Douglas, Norris, and Cherokee dams, and a few others, provided the Alcoa factory and later the Y-12 complex with all the power they needed to pump out aluminum and A-bombs. According to a 1946 article in Fortune magazine, what won the war was air power based on aluminum and Alcoa. So the Holston River is formed by the North, Middle, and South Forks. The North and South Forks converge around Kingsport, Tennessee, and the Middle and South Forks converge around Washington County, Virginia. The Holston then flows from Kingsport roughly to Knoxville before joining the French Broad to become the Tennessee River. Some of the maps have, I've studied have called the river the Gugigi, which according to David K. Hackett is a Lenape word for Yuchi people because the Yuchi lived along this river. In some later texts it is referred to as the Cherokee River and others as the Holston River, which would be the name given to it in honor of Stephen Holstein, who settled somewhere upriver around 1746. It was used by many explorers to traverse into native territory, such as Needham and Arthur and Lieutenant Henry Timberlake. You can see on the following maps the original path of the river. You can also see the names of several no longer existent towns and the sites of many houses along the former river basin. For example, the original Highway 25E as well as the Morristown, Cumberland Gap, and Ohio Railroad, as shown in later photos, are also now under the lake. 25E roughly followed the original Buffalo Trail, which dated back to Native American times, as well as the original Boone Trace. Today, when the lake is at Winter Pool, provided TVA lowers the lake enough, the ghosts of these old communities can still be seen in the form of rotting building foundations, peculiar stone placements, roads, and former railroad beds. Now, I know what you're thinking. How did all these towns, buildings, and stuff get under the lake? Well, when TVA began surveying uh, the floodplain in the late 1930s, they also began buying up property, like this picture here, but not all of them got bought. According to first-hand accounts by several families, if a family was unwilling to sell their land or home, TVA would use eminent domain to force them out, while the families would simply be forced out when the waters would reach their homes. During this period, it's thought that over 875 families had to be relocated. Some cemeteries required the dead to be exhumed and moved, and those that had no immediate family to defend them were left in place. Historical buildings and homes were torn down, and, and even the original town of Bean Station is now under the lake. The following pictures show us some scenes that were taken just before the creation of Cherokee Lake. Now in the meantime, I did ask archaeologist Alan Longmire about the potential loss of the native settlements that could be under the lake, and he replied with, quote, There was some salvage archaeology done by teams led by Dr. T. M. N. Lewis of UT Knoxville who had to be rescued by boat as he was digging a site near the original location of Bean Station, while the water was rising in 1944. I don't know how many sites were inundated, but it's safe to say there were a great many. Now, TVA has done inventory of the sites in the drawdown zone, as is their obligation under federal law, 
end quote. He then went on to say that the location of these sites are restricted to the state level and that it is a federal charge to collect artifacts on TVA land. That's all for today, folks. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe for more videos, and hit the bell button to be notified every time I upload a new video.